What is going on guys? This is JL Ortiz here and in today's video we are covering one of the most anticipated games for myself and I believe among others. It is the right now the most played game on Game Pass for the past couple months and that game is High on Life. This game is made from the creator of Justin Roiland. If you guys don't know that name, that is the person who created Rick and Morty and Solar Opposite. So if you're a big fan of those shows, I would highly recommend this game just to you know, start it off. But before we get into the review, I did want to ask if you guys can uh, leave a like if you guys enjoy the review. If you guys find that you might not agree with some of the things I said, feel free to leave a dislike. And if you enjoy the content, also subscribe to the channel. But anyways, let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, High in Life is a single player first person campaign. The core premise of this game is that this alien cartel named the G3 has invaded Earth. And along the way, they've found out that humans are drugs and they use them to sell them and get high off of, which is kind of a funny premise if you kind of think about it. And it's kind of fits into that Justin Roiland theme. But you play the role as this teenage boy who sees this whole world and all of Earth kind of be taken away from the G3. So he becomes a bounty hunter. And along the way, you come across these other weapons and these other aliens that are in the form of weapons called Gatlians. And you and these Gatlians will asset, attempt to try to make things right and basically save all of humanity along the way. And you will come across multiple, multiple mini bosses of different aliens that are involved into the G3. So you try to take all of them down. And yeah, that's pre pretty much it. It's, it's pretty straightforward story. It's nothing super crazy. But I will say, I believe the world building is pretty awesome, even though the story is, you know, it's a comedy. It's not supposed to be the most in-depth thing in the world. So if you're looking for that, don't really expect it, but it doesn't mean that it's not a fun game. But I do believe the world building is really, really cool. Kind of the same idea with Rick and Morty in the sense where it's this multi-dimensional world with all these different planets and all these different species of anything so your mind can really get kind of let loose into thinking the possibilities of all these different things and that's one of the great things about sci-fi and other fantasy type of things is that it really gets your mind going so because of that i can see the future of this game and the world if they want to continue this ip in this franchise it can really go into a lot of different directions and it really leaves things open to what can happen next. I do want to talk about the graphics in this game. The graphics in this game, I think, are amazing. I thought the game runs very smooth. It's very well optimized. I run a 2070 and I was getting about 90 frames on Ultra. So about a mid-range, older GPU, and I'm still getting about 90, which in a single player game, I'm okay with. Um, but yeah, the the... The level designs along with the graphics were just to me really cool seeing the animations and the colors and just seeing the scale of the worlds that you can see in the backdrops even though it wasn't super open world and it's very structured in the way that they want you to go it makes you feel like you're in this open world where you can see so much more and you can explore so much more reality you can't but it gives you that illusion that you can which i think is pretty cool at the same time it makes it it makes it for a more relaxing type of game for a person who just wants to like go in there and just shoot things up for whatever reason and i can't really explain it and i think maybe it has to do with the colors and the way that they designed this design this game was that it gives me a very kind of retro feel just kind of like that simple arcade shooter that you go in there you just have fun there's not like this deep level progression type of thing it's just there's a little bit of mods you can put on your players here and there, but for the most part, it's really just going in there and trying to save the world. Um, one of the biggest selling points for a lot of people in this game, and one of the things I love about this game, is the dialogue. The dialogue to me in this game is hilarious. It fits my type of comedy. I know for some people it's not all, but if you're a person who was interested in this game and you love everything that Justin Roiland does with Rick and Morty and Solar Opposites, this game is the one for you. It's it, it really blends that idea of being really like cheesy, but then also like very blunt at the same time, which he's kind of known for. So it, it's it's pretty awesome. And because of that blunt bluntness that he has in his comedy, 
the level of detail into those interactions are perfect. And you can tell that the developers in this game understood what gamers actually do when they play, especially in these single player games. Us gamers, you're always messing around, trying different things, shooting random NPCs. And it's kind of cool that they knew that and they acknowledged that in the dialogue of the character. So like, for example, if you try to shoot this random kid that is talking shit to you, he'll be like, you can't just shoot a kid it, or like, or if you mess up and you fall off the edge, they insult you. So it's just, it's pretty funny that there's every little bit of interaction or any little bit of thing that you do, they have a response for, for the most part. And there's a lot of little hidden Easter eggs where they tell you to like wait for a long time. And most people don't actually wait. And then the people who do actually wait just to see what they say, there's a response for that. And I just thought that was really cool. And it, I'm sure you can kind of tell that the developers had a really fun time making this game. So that was pretty, pretty, pretty cool to see. And um, something I've never seen before in a game. Um, I do want to kind of talk about the weapons now. So you start off you pretty much have five weapons from the jump like not from the jump but as you progress through the game there's no other weapons you can really get but each weapon has its own character its own personality and its own set of dialogue because at the end of the day these weapons are not just weapons they're characters as well like they're actual aliens that can talk to you but they work harmoniously with us to use them so the first weapon that you get off the jump is kenny and you might recognize the voice immediately. He's the voice from Morty. And he is a single fire gun with a secondary fire of a glob shot. So single fire, kind of like a standard pistol. But then the glob shot is like this, in a way, kind of like a grenade launcher where you shoot this massive glob to take out multiple enemies, or you can take down walls to push walls down and certain things. The second weapon that you get is Knifey. Knifey is essentially just a knife with a grapple ability. So you can knife people really fast. And then when you come across areas where you need to grapple onto zip lines or you need to grapple onto rocks, he's the guy that you use. The next character you come across is Gus. Gus is essentially a three round shotgun with the ability to shoot these discs that can bounce off walls. Certain walls they can actually stick to so you can jump on them and use them as steps. But um, he's primarily used as a shotgun. He also has a third ability where he can kind of suck enemies towards you. So enemy that's kind of far away, you can suck them towards you and then use your shotgun blast to then take him out in one hit. It's very useful if you're using a shotgun and it, it you could see how they knew some of the downfalls of certain weapons and they made it their secondary shot very useful for it. If you guys can get what I'm saying there. The fourth gun that you get is Sweezy. Sweezy is a fully automatic gun with a time bubble as its secondary weapon. The time bubble is really cool because in areas like you can see here, there's fans that you need to get through. You can shoot a time bubble. The fan will slow down so you're able to walk through it. You can use this in multiple fights. You can shoot a, a time bubble into a group of people and then use her fully automatic shots at them and take them all down to keep them to keep him at bay. Next is Creature. Creature is a very interesting gun, something like I've never seen before, honestly. He has these kids, I guess, that he like just spawns off, off instantaneously. And he's able to shoot those kids at enemies and then those kids are very, very vicious and they jump on top of the enemies, they beat them, they eat them, they like kill them immediately and then they just die. Um, it's, I've actually found to be that Creature's weapons and his kids are actually extremely strong, especially they kind of work as like an assistance to you. So you can shoot all of Creature's shots and then swip, we switch weapons over to Sweezy, to Gus, to Kenny. And while his kids are attacking the enemies, you can then use your other gun to get the other enemies that those kids aren't going after. So, but I, there is some things in this game that I do have some cons, not very many, um, and some of them aren't really things that I necessarily care about, but I feel like I should bring it up. Um, one is the lack of enemy variety. You pretty much face the same enemies the entire time outside of the mini bosses. So you have the mini bosses, which are each different aliens and different species, but every other 
enemy that you face in between those are these green aliens covered in this yellow goop in a way and that's pretty much all you face with the side of like flying the little bit of fi flying robots and um certain like bugs but for the most part that's pretty much it like in between your boss fights it's you're pretty much facing those there's not really any more like for lack of better words many mini bosses in between it to to kind of keep things going there are some other guys who do attack you who just like charge you but they're pretty easy to take down i did find this game it's a pretty easy simple game um so if you're a person who likes that character growth and that ability to like constantly progress your character in this uh rags to riches type of feel this isn't really for you this game is going to be more so those people who love like games like halo and like doom where you just off the jump you don't really need any mods you can just really for lack of better words just mess things up left and right uh mods can help and make things a little bit fun but for the most part you're like the baddest dude in the game so like i said for me that's not a big deal i actually do like playing games where i don't have to do all this upgrading and stuff sometimes sometimes it's just very relaxing just to go on there and just kill things and feel unbeatable so if you're looking for a game like that this one is definitely definitely for you and as for my last like con per se is that the story wasn't amazing but it's kind of like what you expect it's a goofy quirky funny just entertaining game it's a comedy at the end of the day it's it, it's it's dick jokes it's fart jokes it's like you know it's just one of those type of games so don't expect some amazing well thought out plot it's kind of straightforward you, you're this guy you gotta go beat the head guy and that's pretty much it in a conclusion, I think this game is really fun. It's a really fun game to just laugh to, just have a good time with your friends. I wish this game was co-op. I will say that this game would be really fun on a first run through to play with somebody. But it's pretty short. It's concise for the average player. So anybody can go in there and play it. So if you have Game Pass, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Especially if you're a Rick and Morty fan, you probably already know. And honestly, you probably already play it. But I would really love for them to keep on and continue to build on this IP. I think you can do so many cool things with this game and or with this world. And I hope that they expand it with future iterations. Overall, I would give this game an 8 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let me know. <laughs> so anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.